My name is John Billings. Uh, around town they call me the Grammy Man. We are in Ridgeway, Colorado. We're at 7,000 feet, population 700. It's a beautiful little community with an awesome view of the San Juan Mountains that surround us. I began 31 years ago as the apprentice to the original Grammy maker. His name was Bob Graves. I was in dental school at the time learning how to do casting, and I went by his house to discuss casting with him and discovered that he was losing his kidneys and was on dialysis. I signed on as his apprentice, worked with him for seven years uh, until he passed away. Then I took over the Grammy business, and as I was visiting him in the hospital one night, shortly before he died, he wanted me to promise not to let the Grammys go, that I keep them and, and continue them. So I made that promise to him. As a kid, I had a paper route in, in the San Fernando Valley. Every time I'd get five bucks, I'd run down to the model shop getting another car. And I loved doing fine detail, and, and I had a lot of patience. Last year, we made about uh, 425 Grammys, all told. We actually wanted to have a, our own custom alloy. Um, it, basically, it's an alloy of zinc and aluminum, but we've added some, some trace elements to it and created our own metal, which we call Grammium. I think it sounds a little nicer than zinc. <laughs> this is a, a bronze mold, and it's the uh, mold of the, the cabinet portion of the Grammy. The metal gets poured in at 650 degrees, and it immediately cools down, and it can come right out of the mold. We could probably cast about 50 of these a day. It's pretty, but it's hot. <laughs> the first Grammy was presented in 1958, and it was almost like a prototype. They, did, they hadn't really nailed it down yet. Bob had made the molds for it, and it had a little crank on the side uh, that was cast separately and was then soldered onto the side of the Grammy. You know, the old gramophones had a crank on it. And some time or another, everybody that got one was going to see if that crank worked, and it broke off. It was on a walnut base that was about an inch thick, and it, at one point, they decided, well, let's make the base a little taller, so they increased it just a little bit. All of the little subtle changes, if you could morph it, you would, you would see this Grammy breathing. Once the pieces are then cast, then the grinding and polishing process starts, and it takes literally months to go through that process. Once uh, we take this out of the mold and they cool down, uh, then we grind down the sides and, um, with a belt sander. And this step here, we're going to use this little composite wheel to clean up the, uh, the steps along the cabinet. Um, they come out of the mold pretty crude. All of that's going to need to be cleaned up, and we do it on this wheel. On this batch, we're running 400 Grammys, and this step alone will take probably about three weeks to complete. As I'm in the process, I sort of go into a zone where I'm just, you know, I'm thinking about last year's Grammy show, and I'm thinking about next year's Grammy show, and, and thinking about, you know, what can we do to streamline this process? Or sometimes we've made improvements that have actually added time to the process. I have four guys working with me right now. Um, my oldest son, John, who uh, I could say uh, has been with me 17 years. I have a longtime friend, uh, call him a childhood friend, um, Jim Spear. He actually 
back in California in 1991 when I was making the new Grammy and Jim came and pitched in and gave me a hand and I don't think he ever charged me but um, I've been here now I think uh, full-time two years but I've known John for over 30 years back in California when he was in Van Nuys uh, my father in fact was uh, a good friend of uh, the original Grammy maker Bob Graves the bells they start out as a disc of brass and then they're they're shaped over a spinning cone on the on the lathe and they once they come off of the spinning chuck, they've got a lot of lines in them that I've got to get out of there. And so we rechuck it up in the lathe and, and go in with uh, different grit sandpapers until we finally get a nice smooth finish. Um, pretty much how a trumpet is made. And once we get this thing down to uh, a nice matte finish and smooth with getting all the flaws and pits and lines out of there, then we're going to polish it and then it'll be plated in 24 karat gold. The base is, is also cast out of the same metal and uh, my son John uh, does most of the casting on those and, as well as the grinding. Well, what I'm doing is I'm grinding um, this base so that I can get a flat surface on each side. I'll then bevel a 45 degree bevel on the bottom of the base. This has just come out of the mold and cooled off enough so that I'm able to work on it. And I need a real nice flat surface so that I can send it to the next process where it'll then be painted and, and puttied and, and filled in and primered. It'd take me a week of grinding to do, um, say 400 of them, okay. a solid week. When I'm through with this base, I'll pass it on down the line to Jim Spear who does all of our painting and body work. At Billings Artworks we are a family business. My son has been in here and, and, and he watches me and, and he'll watch grandpa. My son's 10 years old and so we're really trying to keep this a family legacy. Um, After the base comes back from the grinding process, I take and I deburr every edge of this. And in this process Basically, what John has taught me, Big John, is the feel. This is what we're looking for on this, is the feel of this whole base. It's got to be completely flat. And we take, and this probably will take me on one Grammy, maybe, oh, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. So there we got a smooth, base. That will be ready to go in to be primered. There was always this one inherent problem with it. It was the tone arm that was very thin. I remember one year they were sending out the Grammys and about 60 of them broke in the mail before they even got to the recipient just by the shock uh, on the mail truck. I experimented with it and found a, an alloy, a zinc alloy, that I cast the Grammys out of, and that year when they were shipped out, um, not one broke. And I remember taking it into the into the academy and holding it by the tone arm, and, and everybody just shrieked because they knew it was going to break. Well, it didn't break, you know. And this is actually what it holds everything together. This gets bolted to the cabinet, and the 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 bell gets screwed into the arm here. And when they come out of the mold, they're pretty crude, and they've got a lot of seams on them. And so all of that is going to have to be filed off. Now this is ready for, for polishing, and then once it's polished, we'll send it off to the platers. 